What's up, people? It's your man, Black Cobra, back once again with the Wheel Life Show. Today, once again, we'll pull everybody in from the world of electric unicycles and one wheels and all things PEV to have a conversation. And today, I'm pretty excited because we got a real good guest today, somebody who is in the scene. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'll jump over here. So you can see some of his accolades in the back. We're going to be talking about The Electric Pioneers, a film he did, documentary on us, um, have, having to do with all things PEV. He has some of every kind of PEV in there and a whole lot of people that he spoke to in the Atlanta area. Um, you can see all the accolades that have he's garnered around the film industry when it comes to different film festivals and i'm excited i'm super excited to have what we do be put on the world stage um because even though we want to see it we don't always see or always see the best foot being put forward when it comes to us and the best things being talked about and this is one of those times when i feel like we have taken what we do and we've put it to the forefront in a positive manner. So without further ado, I got to bring my man Patrick in with Lansing Productions and his thing behind the Electric Pioneers. We're going to talk about everything that he had to do. My man Patrick, what's up Patrick? How you doing, man? Man, I'm feeling great. I'm on I'm on I'm going live with the OG today, man. <laughs> and um I appreciate you for having me. Um people don't know how much work goes into just setting up a live, doing an interview, mm -hmm. doing the research so that you can ask intelligent questions. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you taking our time to uh, sit down with me today. So real excited. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm real excited too, man. You know, it's not often that I meet somebody who does, has that same kind of energy that I have, but always, but does the same thing, puts a foot in here and a foot in here and a foot in here. And I feel like you're the same kind of person. So I appreciate you. Hats off. I salute you. Cause I think, man, you, you doing it and, and you're not just doing it for you. I think you're doing it for us. So shouts out to you, my man. I, I really appreciate you. Uh, and I'm just learning. I'm just learning about Lansing Productions. I'm just learning about Patrick. And uh, first of all, I'm, I'm jealous. I ain't gonna lie. ATL, oh, man. ATL. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I would love to be down there, man. What What was the weather like today? Man, we actually had good weather. Surprisingly, we were like at about 65 degrees today. But it's been like in the 30s the last couple of days, and we've been getting a lot of rain. But I can't say today was one of those good days. <laughs> well, I got snow and ice outside, so. <clears throat> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> That's, That's why I'm I live nowhere like that, man. I can't do it, man. I don't know how y'all do it, man. Oh, I, I don't think I'm going to be doing it for much longer, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you, my whole life has been here in Massachusetts, and ooh, these winters are brutal. But Man. before we go any further, we need to say what's up to those in the chat. What's up, EUC Lifer? What's going on, man? Good to see you. Lucifer, what's going on? E. Simon, good day, mate. <laughs> it's good to see you from down under, brother. You always jump in. I appreciate you. Uh, even with the times change and differences and all that, you always find a way to be up in here. Uh, so thank you. I appreciate you guys for showing up early. Um um, I'm, I'm sure a few people, a few others will pop in. I got some messages from a few that are just getting out of work and stuff. So, you know, what I love about YouTube is we can always watch the playback. So, <laughs> um, <I> love it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So, uh, I, I got so many questions. I guess I'm just going to start at the beginning, man. Tell me <clears throat> how long, number one, have you been riding? electric vehicles i won't say eucs because you ride boards also so how long have yeah. you been riding i would say probably um around six years or something like that seven years um and really how it kind of started we were just riding our bicycles um near this this place called old fourth war skate park in atlanta and it's a really dope skate park um tony hawk's foundation actually helped build it with the okay. city of atlanta so me and my son were on our bikes and we we rode by this dope skate park and these guys are just killing it. And my son <laughs> looked over at me. He was about five. He's like, Dad, I want to skateboard. And in my mind, I'm like, bro, I ain't never skated in my life. I'm old. My knees hurt, you know. But I said, you know what? I'll buy us some some skateboards. And we both got on our journey of riding skateboards. And we saw somebody blow by us, man, on a on a uh, electric skateboard. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay. 
it's time for an upgrade. And that's really <laughs> what kind of got us started um, with the Eastgate, man. Yeah, I, I got a similar story. But before I before I get into that, I want to say what's up to the one and only EUC girl. What's up, Nadia? Good to see you. Oh, she be getting it, man. She, oh. she be getting it, bro. Like, That's a talented young girl, but she's also a very humble, very sweet, and very respectful young girl. Shouts mm -hmm. out to Nadia. Her father and mother are doing a good job making sure that Nadia is, is the kind of person she needs to be. Uh, you know, she don't got a big head. She is doing her thing. She's amazing at what she does, but she's she's a really good girl, and, and I appreciate her. She's always around, and she's doing big things. She continues to do big things. But I would also be remiss if I didn't shout out the one and only Roger, Roger Hajali in the house. Roger, EUC. Listen, if y'all don't know him, y'all don't know EUCs. So <laughs> Roger is, is he's like the... I don't know. When you talk OGs, he's been doing it for a minute, and, and uh, he's the architect. <laughs> That's what I call him, the mechanic, the architect, the engineer. And, it, and it's crazy how some people um, have been doing this since the inception. Like, one of the guys in the film, Mark, like, some of these people have been riding since, like, nine bots in those, like, mm -hmm. the dangerous wheels, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> the, the You know, they were the crash dummies for us, you know what I'm saying, back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they've been doing it ever since. So I, I, I'm telling you, and uh, what I love is getting together with people um, when I when I go out to these different events uh, around different parts of the country, and meeting different people. So it's it's one of those things. Like you know, certain people stand out. Roger stands out. Nadia stands out. I mean, I mean, you got to look at it. Many of us do because of the sheer nature of what we do. It takes a certain type of person to be willing to do what we do. And then we, we get together and share it. But I, I, I just think that there are certain people that are, you know, we're just made for this and, you know, but I, I digress. I was telling you, I had the same similar type of story as you, except mine was a, a little separated. When my son was younger, I think he was about seven. He said, same thing, dad, I want to skateboard. And I was like, bet, let's go do it. I used to skateboard when I was a kid. You okay. know, I, I wasn't Tony Hawk good or nothing like that. But, you know, I was Where's nowhere. the footage? I need to see the footage. Yeah, I need listen, to see the footage. Yeah, yeah. So I, it was it was like, I was like, okay. Like, you know, I could ride the board. But he said he wanted to ride. Same thing. They put up a skate park, but this was an indoor skate park. So I okay. said, bet. I went and got him a board. I got me a board. Let's go. That lasted one day. <laughs> my son, oh man! After my that son, one good fall, that one yo, good fall. Yo, my son was you. not having it. He was like, "Yo, dad, that hurt." <laughs> <laughs> they called it quits. Man, I had yo. I had a couple of real hard falls, man. Those first couple of days. And the funny story, I used to wear every set of knee pads when I was skating. Knee pad, elbow guard, wrist guards. My sister's like, "Bro, you out here looking like RoboCop?" When I was, <laughs> I was like, "But I was like safety first, man." You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not a screen chicken, so, but it, you know, that, that's what laid the foundation, you know? Yeah, that's what it is now. Like, you just said exactly what we say all the time, because everywhere I go, I'm, I'm geared out, and people like, yo, man, you got a lot of gear on. I said, yo, I got a lot of bones and bruises. <laughs> I'm like, Yeah, people look. don't understand. You want to be able to get up and ride another day. Shoot. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is. People don't like it, but, you know, um, I don't I don't think that oh thanks Roger I appreciate you bro <laughs> I don't think people understand like unless you've had like a bad injury like um my shoulder is like forever injured and it'll I'll never be the same I'm not even the same dude anymore but it's still and, and I always tell people that's that's when you know the level of love that I have for PEVs and and the fun and enjoyment and psychological benefit that they have and that's that segues me into one of the things that you touched on in your film. Um, and I really want to know, cause I know what you said, cause it resonated with me, but how did you get there? Tell me what, what was the, 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 the thing that got you to say, I'm going to do this and put this yeah. film together. <clears throat> that, that's a really good question because it was, it was a huge process, but I would say really the idea started during the pandemic. And in the city of Atlanta, we were completely shut down during the pandemic. And the only things that you could do was go to the grocery store, 
go to the hospital, work, mm -hmm. and then they said exercise. And they used to let us walk outside and stuff. And me and my family, we would ride our electric skateboards. That was our, our way to get um, some mental relief, so to speak, because we were working from home. Um, our son was going to school from home. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, there was a lot of research out there at the time that domestic violence went up exponentially during the pandemic. And it was because people were at home with each other 24 seven. They didn't have a relief that you typically had like when your spouse went to work or your husband went to work or your children went to school. So going out and being able to skate was our um, sanctity, so to speak, or sanctuary. And I started to frame it a little bit and I started to make more um, YouTube related content and mm -hmm. then the content started to get a little bit better. And then I said, you know what? Why don't I tell a more well-rounded perspective of what the community looks like? Because a lot of times when people see us from a distance, um, they just see people with all this armor on, all this gear. <laughs> Sometimes they see people riding crazy. And that is their perspective of what we are. But they don't understand all the nuances as to why people actually ride you know, the mental health, the self-care, all of these different kind of things. And that's why I wanted to make this film. Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, it's, and it, and it just, I feel like I love what you did. I love how you portrayed what we do because it's, it's, it's authentic portrayal. It's just more of us talking about how we feel. Cause we all feel that way. Um, but I believe, I believe it's a conversation starter. You know what I mean? I, I, I believe that that's that's why it's so important is because I have this conversation with a lot of people, but this will get this conversation started. You, I could just send this link to somebody. Hey, check this out. You know what I mean? And then we could talk about it kind of thing. And I like that. I like that it's out there and I don't have it. I don't have to be the one pushing it out there. Like I, I want it to be out there. I want the conversation for people to know how we feel how, how helpful this is for us and how important it is for our mental well-being to be allowed to do this and not feel like we are the bad guy because this is something that we love. And, you know, and the fact that in many communities that's happening is is something I really don't like. And I believe that this uh, Electric Pioneers will help those people as well who are trying to push forward and show that, hey, we need this. And you've already put it out there. So you you got, it's like you started that conversation and I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that. Definitely. Oh, thank, oh appreciate that, man. And, and and you, I think you hit the nail on the head and that with this film, I wanted it to be accessible to like everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of uh, digestibility, so to speak. And, you know, we've had a chance to go to a few film festivals and the thing that makes me the most excited is when we the film is over and we're walking to the back and people come over and they talk to you and you have people from all different backgrounds, races, ethnicities. And mm -hmm. I remember it was this one lady, she was like 70. She was like, I love that film. I didn't know that people wrote those things <laughs> and I didn't know anything about that community and it was so great. So it, it, it was a way to really explain to her what it was about, but then just anybody else who's been watching it, that's kind of been the response is that people are like, hey, I can truly see why you guys, in some cases, are willing to risk your lives on those things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's that's honestly what did what did it for me. Um, and, and it does it for a lot of people. So, you know, it's it's the conversation that needs to be had. Um, also, shouts out to Big Boy Fast Boy. Yo, Nick, welcome in. Welcome in. Part of the family. <laughs> uh, Matt Bebo, good to see you, man. Ruby Summers. Senior E moment. Is that James? What's up, man? Um, appreciate everybody jumping in. But yeah, everybody in this chat right now has had this conversation with somebody. Everybody. And that conversation always goes the same. It starts out a little something like, how do you do that? Like, Or why would you do that? Or that looks so dangerous. Or, you know, it's always the same. And then you always feel like you end up in the same conversation just from different angles with different people um and and this conversation is now solidified and honestly what i was telling you about because we talked about a little bit you have the behind the scenes episode then you have the actual film episode i really think you could do more episodes <laughs> and just continue the story and like you know what i would like to see is like maybe in a different a, a different state you know what i mean and 
you know, in another state or even another country because there are different places that we could go with this. You know what I mean? And I think it would be fantastic. But the fact is that it started and and, and that's the key. And I think it started at a good time um, because, you know, it is it's important right now. They're fighting. People are fighting for their rights right now to be able to do this. And I'm seeing, you know, we, we knew it was coming. There's going to be a lockdown as far as what we have to do. But we just want to explain to them why we do it. And we, get, we want them to have that in their mind. So, you know, that's the that's the deal. That's the deal. But um, I got another question for you, bro. Your family. Your family. Yeah. You got the whole family. Like, you, you told the story in the behind the scenes. Your wife was talking about it. But I want to hear it again. <laughs> like, how did you get your family? Because, listen, I have a wife and three kids. Nobody will do nothing with me. <laughs> on these days. nobody so how did you do it give me the sauce talk to I, me I, I gotta give you the sauce man so like my son was always down well what happened was i bought one electric skateboard um because i was like let me see if it's really worth it if we'll really like it so then i used to pull my son he would be on a regular board and i would be on the electric board and i would be pulling him and be riding and after a while, I was like, "This is too damn dangerous." So I was like, "Let me go ahead, and, <laughs> let me go ahead and buy a second board, right?" So then I got a second board, and then you know I started to make more content on YouTube, and then I started to partner with different brands, and they would send me stuff to review it. So we would just end up with lots of boards around the house, and one of the things that we talk about it in the film, you know, transportation equity is a big thing in major cities. And one of the things that we would do is we would ride them to save on cost of like parking and things like that. Cause you go somewhere and they want to charge you $20 just to park. Mm -hmm. And it's like, bro, I'll go park down the street, ride a mile on my board and I'm not paying that $20 to park. So we started to see different ways um, in which it was advantageous in that way. But then also, like I was saying during the pandemic, it gave us a, a way to get out, ride, be safe and not be around people and things like that. And so just, it just kind of grew from there. And then we would do little skits, riding the boards and stuff like that. And um, it just kind of grew from there. You know, it's kind of like a natural progression, so to speak. And a lot of people have said that the fact that they've seen my son riding, because my son started riding when he was about six. Mm -hmm. And they said that, um, Hey man, I bought my board, my son a board because of you and your son. Cause they saw <laughs> us out there riding. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm sure we might talk about it a little bit later, but you know, we even wrote a couple children's book about PEVs, you know, electric skateboards and electric unicycles. So it just started to just take on a life of its own as we started to ride more and more together, more people started to see it and things like that. And then it just become, became a fun way for us to just to bond and have a good time. Okay. So what I'm hearing is you forced them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, look, hey, no, hey, you said it, I did it. Look, <laughs> you said it, I did it. Look, I said all of that, and that's what you took me. <laughs> Man, I love it. I love it. Look. <laughs> That's crazy. He's like, so basically, yeah, man. So you got you got to make it do. You got to force them, man. We got to no, get I, them on these things. I say it. I say that because I watched the film and, and your wife was talking about how you had her with the board. Yo, yo um, and, and shouts out, shouts out to your wife. She she did a, she did a great job. She seems like a great sport. Um, Candace, right? <laughs> she, yeah, that's she correct. seems like a great sport. She did it, you know. Um, <clears throat> it seemed like, and I laugh because us creative individuals who are always doing something and pushing the edge of the envelope of 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 other people's like belief that things are normal. Like I'm always doing something. People are like you're doing what? And, and so, but people who are like us, our wives have to deal <laughs> deal with what we're always doing. So, yeah. uh, your I wife mean, said it. Yeah, I think that that's part of it, though, man. Like, cause I even have a couple of, like friends, or, like mentors, that are a little bit older, and they always be like, "Man, that's that L.A. California, you always willing to take risks." <laughs> and I'm like, "Man." I feel like you only as, as young as you feel you are, right? And, mm -hmm. I, and I feel like you have to do things that um that challenge you mentally and physically as long as you can. And um, like I said, if if and I, I used to tell the story a lot when I did motivational speaking. When my son said, Dad, 
I want a regular skateboard. And if I had didn't have a growth mindset and didn't say yes, we wouldn't have been writing. I wouldn't have been creating YouTube videos. We wouldn't have wrote those children's books about PVs and I wouldn't have this documentary out. Just mm-hmm. think of all because I said yes. yes. And a lot of times in life, we, we say no to things or we have a closed mindset. We don't have that growth mindset and we don't know how much that impacts us in different areas of our lives mm-hmm. because we said no. It's still getting a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. We have to be comfortable with yes and all that that brings. And that's one of the things that, I mean, one of the philosophies I live by, um, I, I really am because look, I, look, I ain't no spring chicken. Y'all know I'm, I'm in my fifties. I'm like, yo, but I do not say no quickly. If there's something, if there's a challenge that I need to rise to, if there's something that I want to try, I automatically go, Hmm, I could probably do that. And I'm mm-hmm. automatically, I'm, I, I believe that when things come out, I'm on the yes side first. Like, mm-hmm. no has to be talked. You know, I got to be talked out of things. Let's put it that way. Because yes is my automatic mindset. Because like you said, if you don't say yes to things, great things can't happen if you don't get out of your no mentality. You don't exactly. understand? What, that That is so, so, it's, it's true. And people don't understand how powerful that is you have to be open to that yes mentality and and we don't always find people that are you know uh in the chat big boy fast boy first of all thanks man he said hit that like button y'all y'all enjoying what we talking about hit that like button you thinking about what's coming in the future hit that like button jump on that but big boy fast boy said how do you get the average person excited to try an euc or pev rather than being fearful of dying if they tried it if we could get people past that fearful mentality, adoption would really take off. I agree with you wholeheartedly, Nick. And that is one of the big reasons why I wanted to talk to Patrick and I wanted to talk about electric pioneers. And as a matter of fact, let me bring it back up in the background so people can see it. Um, electric pioneers is very important because I believe that this, this film is doing that, Nick. I believe that this film is going to help people to get past that fear by looking at the reality that it's being done that you know these people are really doing this yes we really are and it's not just one or two people uh i I love that you put the group photo on the front here (laughs) because on the poster because that's anybody that's been on a group ride this is this is like one of your favorite parts is taking that group shot with everybody in it the Mm -hmm. inclusivity the the belonging that you feel being in the group shot on a really good group ride, you'll never forget it. You'll always mm-hmm. be able to reflect back on it. And I think this film brings that to the masses. And in case you guys don't know, you see it in the corner. I think you can see, yeah, you can see it there. It's on Tubi. So go on Tubi, everybody in the chat, make sure if you haven't checked out the film yet, check out Electric Pioneers on Tubi. Um, hit that up and don't just check it out, but share it to everybody that you can think of. We have our community is bigger and growing. It's bigger than we think it is. And it's growing faster than we even know. Um, I keep seeing different countries with group rides, not just states, not just cities, different countries with group rides. So pass this out. Make sure everybody's on it. Everybody that we know should have seen this by the end of the week. You know what I mean? So we can, we can pass this along. Um, because it's, that. it's powerful. It's impactful, yeah. brother. And one, and one of the things, um, cause we, we talked a lot about my family. Um, the film actually like chronicles, um, it follows a group of Atlanta PEV riders. And, um, we interviewed, I think, was it seven or eight people for the film? Different races, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different age groups. And to really get that multifaceted perspective of what it is, you know, like to be a part of this community. And to be honest about it, like, and I say this all the time, every time I talk about the film, I say, we, 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 because, uh oh, my oh. light just went out. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, me, we lost Give me you. one second. Yeah, let yep. me plug my light back in. I think the dog, <laughs> the dog untripped the cord. Give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens? You never know. <laughs> 
So, um, like I said, people, this is one of those things where we have no choice but to go check this out. I think that it's super important for us to share it um, because not everybody knows about us. Um, I know you guys know, uh, and I could tell by all the people in the chat because I know most of you or all of you uh, personally, and it is important for us to make sure that other people get this message. And this is some a way that you can share the message without having to actually give the message. The message can be shared just by them watching the film. So you were you were you were saying <laughs> that the film was chronicling your uh, your your family, and then you you interviewed some people. Go ahead. Yeah. So the film really is about um, the Atlanta um, community and really kind of capturing their stories. And um, I, I I say this all the time. Every time I was at a film festival and I had a chance to talk, their stories really helped carry this film. And one of the things that was so important to me um, was to capture their stories in a in a good way. Because when people are vulnerable and they share their stories, people let you come inside of their homes, sit on their couches, ask some questions. I feel like you have a responsibility to do right, you know, with that information. And I'm so proud of the film um, because I feel like that's what we did. You know, we we captured these people's stories and we told them with fidelity and um, and, and integrity and honesty. Yeah, it is. It is. It is one of those things that. Um... It, it's it's powerful to see. It's impactful on others, and I think you chose some some good people to um, to interview. The thing is, what I love about our sport is it, it, you couldn't pick any wrong people. You know what I mean? There's there's so many different stories. Like any group ride has an eclectic group of people from all different walks of life, all different you know nationalities all different upbringings. There's just, there's no rhyme or reason why we do this. Like you can't say this is only for jocks. This is only for, you know, business professionals. This is only for doctors. This is only, you can't say anything like that because our sport is something that we all share and we're all different. So we're different, but this brings us all together in a way that is just crazy, is crazy. Uh, yeah. So it's powerful. It's powerful. Yeah. And and that's something that like, that's kind of like one of the unintended consequences that people get that I don't think they understand that when you buy one of these vehicles, it's like you get a membership into an exclusive club automatically. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. that was one of the biggest themes in the film was the whole aspect of community. Right. And there were several people in the film. They talked about how like they moved to, you know, like Atlanta, they didn't know anybody. Mm -hmm. And how this gave them a sense of community, a sense of belonging. Um, and not just, you know, in terms of, oh, I just do rides all the time. People make meaningful friendships and relationships from this community. You know, it's, it's not just a bunch of guys who just ride. <clears throat> you know, we, I, I'm sure there are people that you ride with that you talk to a couple mm -hmm. times a week just mm -hmm. to talk you know, movies, uh, stocks, whatever you're doing. <laughs> and you build these like real meaningful relationships yep. from this community. Yeah. And that's, that's why I love our community is because it is so different, but it brings us together from all over the place. Um, like, like Roger, uh, you know, he's, he's nowhere near me. He's way out there in Cali, but I can call Roger anytime and talk to him about whatever. Um, you guys have seen on stream. You see me call Marty, and, and uh, you know, Marty, hey, what's up? And then pull Marty in. Um, and he's also out, out there in California, you know. Yeah, he's um, an OG. Marty been yeah. doing it for forever. Yeah. I mean, Don, Don Champion. Like, it just, there's now these are people that I would not have met if it were not for EUC, if it were not for PEVs, if it were not for us coming together, um, like on this show and talking, you know, I, I started to, to and, 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 uh, while I'm on that, I apologize people that I'm not more regular on here. I would love to talk to more people more often, but I guarantee you it's coming is coming. Like I said, um, retirement stuff is happening, um, as early as next month from one job and then a year from another. So I have more time because I love talking to this community. I truly do. Excuse me. You guys, bring me joy and excitement and, and I feel like we're more powerful together. So I agree. There's always an issue. And like I said, 
Patrick, you your your film came at a perfect time because I was just sent something about I think it's is it New Hampshire? Oh man, there's so many states going through it right now. I think it's New Hampshire. Is they they were they're they're about to do some legislation. They're working on it. Um, and somebody sent me something. They're like, I hope you're gonna talk about this. And I'm like, yeah, you know, um, I would like to pull some somebody else who's who's in that state and going through it. So I, I may have another conversation really soon. Um, and there's a lot of things we need to talk about, but we gotta stay together. We got to come together and we got to stay together. What's, so, what's happening with their legislation out there? They're trying to ban stuff or what, what are they doing? Yeah, they're trying to make it. They're trying to make it so you can't ride them and and trying to ban it. And it's one of those things where we can't, you know, we can't allow that. And obviously, if they're going to do something like that, they, they need the backing of the community. So mm-hmm. we need to go to the community and let them know why these things are so important to us. And yeah. that's one and of that, the. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna say that's like literally when I when, when I was doing this film, that was one yeah. of the the audiences that I had in mind was mm-hmm. lawmakers and decision makers, because mm-hmm. I think that if people watch this film, if you're a lawmaker, if you're a decision maker, I think that it gives you a completely different perspective that allows you to make way more informed um, decisions and opinions about what this community is about. Yeah, there are some people wilding. Like we, we got to keep it 1000 people out here. They look crazy. They, it's, it's a 360 cameras riding through traffic, doing crazy <laughs> stuff. Right. But then you have a whole segment of people that use these things, mental health purposes, transportation, equity, community, self care, um, all of these different things, why people ride these vehicles. But most people, when you just look at us on an Instagram, you look at us on TikTok or whatever, you just see the speed demon element. You don't understand all the other layers of this. And I, I really hope that, um, you know, maybe, it, maybe you know, we talk offline with this. I would love to see if I can get the film in some of those decision makers' hands up there so that they can mm-hmm. watch it, so yeah. that they can, they can get a broader understanding of what this is about. Hundred percent, a hundred percent, and that's why I said for everybody to share it because I think it's very important for us to share these types of things with those type of people because the people who are making the decisions or driving the decision because they don't ultimately make the decision. Obviously, it's the people that have to make the decision, but they drive the decision and they normally steer the decision in the way that they want it to go. So if they're going to be steering it, we want them to have this film in mind. We want them them to have our best interest at heart. We want them to know our thoughts and feelings and desires and needs when it comes to these PEVs. And they can't know that if we don't bring it to them. And a lot of times it's hard for us to get them to listen to us. Because when are they going to get the story of PEV? When are they going to get the story? Are they going to come out to a group ride and hang out? No, they're not going to. So they're not going to get our story from us. And yeah, we can go to town halls and we can go to meetings and we can do stuff like that. But what does that consist of? us standing up at a podium and telling them how we feel that is not as emotion invoking as a film about it or as a video about it or you know that's why i think it's important for us to continue to create um and things like this have to get put out uh because i'll be honest it's it's easy for us to put put out the instagram um post or the tiktok post of us doing something wild because we love to share it with each other but if that's all they see then of course that's going to be a problem for them that's going to be a problem for us so it's better if they get the whole story yes we do all kinds of things like that but we do them because our mental health has been positively influenced and impacted by these wonderful vehicles that we ride and if you know that if you feel that then there's no way that you would in, in in good conscience make legislation that would stop us from riding what helps us every day mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. That's, that's why i think it's important i think it's real important so yeah and just um, a second what you were saying like i never knew people outside of america literally now i talk to people on instagram europe china mm-hmm. all over the place all because of these vehicles and it's mm-hmm. you know even in other states and it's crazy you know how it's like it knocks down all bar- barriers. They say like music is a universal language. Mm-hmm. PVs are a universal language yes. as well. You know, 
Mm -hmm. Well, Pete, Pete Lee, what's up, man? Pete bought one of my EUCs. I hope it's still running for you well. <laughs> he said, we met with, uh, with the group in New Hampshire. That's where it was, New Hampshire, last weekend. And they're listening to us. So this is what I was saying. The group went down there to try and talk to them about them making legislation that would ban us. And, and, and they're listening, which is important. So, Pete, if those people are listening, send them the information on this film and have them watch it just so they can see some of the different people and backgrounds and, and, and how we feel. And, and, you know, I know that they were listening to you. This is something that will help, um, in, in our regard, um, you know, for, for all of us, not just cause New Hampshire, maybe one state trying to ban it now, but you know how things go. One state does it and the rest will follow suit. And that's the last thing we want. The last mm -hmm. thing we want. Um, Stephen Jordan said, Eastgate saved me from drug, drugs and depression. It discovered during a recovery, and it's been five years, 100% sober. Now I save money for PEVs, not pills. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> that, that is a fantastic like testimony. And I hope you, I hope you share that a lot, Stephen, because um, a lot of people are not brave enough to say what happened or where they came from or what they've been through. But when we share, we're stronger for it. So continue to and, share, brother. I appreciate and, your story. And thank you for sharing that. And and that's it's funny because Hayes in the film has a very similar story. Uh, he talked about how this mm -hmm. allowed him to get rid of some of those vices as well, the drinking, the drugs and stuff like that. He shared a, a very similar, you know, story and testimony in the film. So, you know, those are the kind of stories that people need to hear. You know what I'm saying? And and those are not the stories that are at the forefront when people talk about our community. So, man, thank you for sharing that. That's that's an amazing story. And I would I, I don't know what his Instagram is. I would love to connect with you, brother, and, and talk offline. So you, you heard that, Stephen. Um, you know, you can see uh, Patrick. He'll have all his social media stuff will be linked below the video. I'll make sure that you can you can find him uh, on, on uh, Instagram, YouTube and all that. Lansing Productions. Um, it's important for us to to come together. So that's another story that can be told. Um, shouts out to Primo from Worcester. Primo, what up, man? What up? And Wilson, my man. Now it's Wilson's Hobbies. Okay, okay. Uh, another uh, content creator. Yo, Wilson, I like that slow-mo you did. He just put out a slow-mo video, slow motion, opening the wheel. <laughs> I was dying. Um, but yeah, so... What I want to do also, um, oh, uh, Steven said, thank you, thank you. The film meant a lot to me. No lie. Um, I had goosebumps when I started watching. You felt like he was oh, telling man. your story, right? It, it, I'm oh, telling man. you. Thank it's, you. That story, is, it's our story, and he told it well. So, <laughs> so uh, Patrick, you touched on it a little bit, and I want to make sure that everybody knows also, you're not just a filmmaker, but you're also an author. Um, yes, sir. And, you know, could you share a little bit about that? I want I want the audience to hear uh, a little bit about your um, you in regards to that. Yeah. So my my real name is Patrick. And uh, you were asking me, like, is your name Lancy or is it Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> and we and look, we was cracking up last night about this story. <laughs> but what, what it came from is that um, I'm an author. Um, I've written like 15 books and I used to do a lot of public speaking, um, traveling you know, throughout the United States, going to schools. Uh, I've been inside jails. I've been inside of colleges speaking and different things like that. So when I found this community and I started making content, I was like, do I want to put PEV related stuff on my motivational speaking page? And I was like, that don't make a lot of sense. Right. So then I created the Lansing Phillips Instagram and would create more content. But as we delved deeper into PEVs and stuff like that, and we really loved it so much, um, my son and I decided to write a couple of children's books um, around skateboarding and things like that. So we wrote a book called The Adventures of Little Jam and the Skate in the Skate Park. And then that led us to a, a series of other books. And then the last two books that we've written are The Adventures of Little Jam and the Electric Skateboard and The Adventures of Little Jam and the Electric Unicycle. And they're really cool children's books that kind of talk about our journey of how we learn how to ride these vehicles. And one of the things I love about the books is that like they have QR codes in them so that when you scan them, it opens up actual videos and it's real interactive for like the young people and the kids. 
so yeah, man, in addition to like um, the content creation uh, space, um, I used to do a lot of like public speaking and stuff like that. And I, like I said, I've written um, like 15 books and used to do a lot of, a lot of speaking and stuff like that. So I, I pulled up the book behind us. So Little Jam, oh, okay. Adventures of Little Jam <laughs> and the Electric Unicycle. So yes. I, I he sent this to me, y'all, last, was it last night or the night, night mm-hmm. before last? And as soon as he sent it to me, I bought it. I was, <laughs> and I was like, bro, I'm gonna send you one. Because I, like, I was, I was like, bro, you didn't waste no time. Because I'm gonna send you a film poster and then also yeah. uh, one of the books, man. And since you got that one, I'll send you the electric skateboard book. Okay. Look, see, look, you look. There's a book about electric skateboards or ele- electric unicycles. I, I, I'm in. <laughs> like, the, the, like, he didn't for, waste no time. I, yo, I even finished texting you back. And he's like, "Yo, I got it." <laughs> yo, legitimately, I think I bought the book in like five minutes. I was like, "What? Yeah, Hold real. up!" And he's What's not this? exaggerated. <laughs> not and exaggerated. Yo, I love, I love the artwork. Um, I love how it looks. I can't wait to get it. I was a little upset that it wouldn't come before today's show because I was gonna have it here, so I can open it up. And stuff. But um. I, I like I said, man. This is just us being us on a bigger level or a bigger stage. You know, this is the fact that we now there's a children's book, more than one, in regards to what we do is just to me just means more adaptation. You know, that question that Big Boy Fast Boy asked: How do we get people to get past their fear? Well, we got a children's book talking about them being able to do this if kids can do it i mean you know what i mean think things like this it's just normalizing what we do i believe is the key um that i mean it's just important for us to normalize what we do and have people to understand that we are not like a community of crazy people <laughs> we're, we're a community of people just like everybody else we have just found something that has given us an outlook and an outlet in our lives and it's positive and mm-hmm. and i think that if more people feel it more people hear about it more people see it the more people that'll jump in so we have to continue sharing right mm-hmm. that's agree. the key we we got to continue sharing so that's why i love doing this show because i love talking to, to other people um that have that same passion and you know and it's you don't feel so alone like you said this started in the pandemic right in the pandemic, you ride in and like sometimes you ride like here in 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 Massachusetts in Springfield in particular, there's not a lot of riders. <clears throat> there's only a handful, mm. and I know them all. You know, if a new one pops up, my wife my wife gets she's like, "Why you get so cr- crazy when you see one?" I'm like, "Cause I don't know him." Hold up, yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> you pulling up on him, yo, hey, pull over, hey, pull over. <laughs> Word. I'm like, I'm like, yo, I ride too. I ride too. What up? What up? <laughs> <laughs> your chest. Yo, for real. For real. You know what you know what really gets them is when I do that and I'm in my police car. <laughs> yeah, that, Cause I'm like, I was just thinking, I was like, bro, don't you pull me over in no police car. Talking about, hey, yo, come here. I'm taking off. Look, I'm taking off. <laughs> I'm taking it off, yo, oh, man. I'm not doing it, bro. I'm not doing yo, it. You're I'm not, have to catch I'm not me. lying. You know I've done it. You know I've done it. I've done it a lot. <laughs> yo, I see, I see somebody riding. I'm like, hey, yo. They're like, oh shit. What's he? What's he, what do you want now? You know, <laughs> man. Don't be doing that, man. You gonna give somebody a heart attack, man. You gonna run them out the community, man. What you doing? <laughs> nah, nah, man. Once I start talking to him. Uh, well, now most of them that are, you know, the ones that are around, they know me. So when I hit them with the, eh, eh, <laughs> they, they throw up a fist. They're, They're like, like, yo, what's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's how it should be, man. That is how it should be. But, but like you said, man, it's when people see you as a law enforcement officer, they don't think that you ride. Mm-mm. Right. And they, they just don't get it. Like, even like some of the characters in the film, right? Like Mark, he's a music yep. teacher older gym mm-hmm. and then like, people don't notice like mark is like a, a like a fifth degree black belt too mm-hmm. but he's like you know he looks like john claude van damme long <laughs> silver hair and all that you wouldn't think he would be on the euc and, and mm-hmm. at one point mark i think was logging some of the most miles on the euc in the world like mark doesn't even drive his car mm-hmm. like he literally rides 20 25,000 miles a year on the euc going to work everything like he don't even you know but it just goes to show like there's we look, we're so multifaceted. You know, there is no one 
PEV mm-hmm. rider, uh, whatever. You know, we we look look at me like I'm I'm a speaker. And then you had my wife. She's doing a job. She's in the film. She said she discovered it. Um, you know, because she used to surf a little bit. She was looking for something to still be able to do. So she got in a one wheel and then EUC. So you just hear all these different stories of how, you know, people get into even Matt, like Matt, like in a film, Matt <laughs> had the craziest story to me. Like when, how he said he found out about PVs, like Matt is like this rough New Yorker and this fool said he moved out to Atlanta and had a scooter. I, I'm like, bro, he said, I used to, he said, I used to ride around on my scooter and take pictures. <laughs> I said what? <laughs> I'm, he said I'm filming him like you rode around and 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 took pictures on a scooter. Like I just couldn't fathom that because he's crazy as heck on his EUC now. But it, it just goes to show you, man. Like we all look so different, you know. Like we oh. there is no one person, you know. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, that's it's it's crazy. It's true. Um, I found out because I was I was doing a YouTube video about this camera, the Canon that I'm using actually now. I had just got it and I was like, oh, let me check this out. Um, you know, oh, hold on. I got somebody who just asked, where can we watch the film? Post the information in the show's description. Yes, definitely, Ben. What's up, Ben? Good to see you, man. And yes, it's on Tubi. Um, I'm going to put it back up here um, behind us. You can see um, you can see in the bottom corner it says Tubi right here because that's where it's streaming. <clears throat> so, you can find it on Tubi, but when we're done with the show, uh, I will go into the description and I'll be putting all of Patrick's information and uh, where you, you know, uh, so you can go to Tubi and watch it and all that information. But you can pull it up on Tubi right now. You search Electric Pioneers and you'll see it. Um, I know because I did it last night. I was watching it. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Yo, I had my my daughter was like, Dad, what are we watching? I was like, it's a premiere. It's a premiere. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> put her on gay. You got to put her on gay. <laughs> yeah, and my wife was like, really? She's like, that's awfully loud. I was like, yep, I'm sorry. Let me turn it down. Because <laughs> when I get into something, I'm into it, you know? You into so, it all the way. Yeah, I don't, I don't slow. I'm like, I don't. I don't slowly get into things. I quickly. So anyway, I was in the woods and I'm taking photos and I'm by this little little lake inside the woods and I'm like, oh, and then the hell? I was like, oh, so that's how you got into it. These two dudes buzzed behind me and it was like out and I was like, hey, yo, 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 yo! I said, what in the hell is that? Yo, electric unicycle, yo, you gotta be on it. And they, they friends of mine to this day, Jeremy and Anthony, and um, yeah, they like they put me on. One had the um, the uh, 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 what did he have? The, the not the MSP, the Nikola oh or something. God. It was before the MSP. Oh my god, can't even think the of it. And, it was a Godway. Um, no, no, no. It, it was yeah, it was a Godway. It was the um, oh MSX, and okay. and then um. Anthony had the big one, the fat boy. I always, always call it the Batmobile. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, oh my God, Segway, um, nine bot, nine bot. Yeah, and and it had the fat tire. So I was like, all right, let me ride that one. First, I ride tried the MSX, and I was like, I got up on it. Then I tried the 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 um uh, um the nine bot, and I was like the Z10, and I was like, yo, that's a big ass tire. But yeah. yo. I was hooked from that day. Like, that's how quick I was hooked. The day I saw it, I tried it, and within a week, my order came in. <laughs> oh, so you was ready to go. You was ready to go. Yo, T- tell me tell me about your learning journey. Like, how was it? How long did it take you to, to V8, be able to ride it? I got a V8 because that was the cheapest one that I could get into that could carry my weight. And I, I took me three tries about... 25 30 minutes a day for three days it's it's on my channel i i I put it up there the first video of me trying to ride that that um um v8 and and but the journey started because i saw somebody riding something i thought was magical Mm. that i thought was futuristic i thought was crazy and excuse me i couldn't see that anywhere where could i go to see that i couldn't i happened to see it in real life and it Mm -hmm. it made me like whoa so when people watch what we're doing on your, in the film, they're gonna be like, "Whoa!" Because they can't see that every day. Not everybody. We don't. We're not in every city yet. 
we're not we're all over the place, but we're not prominent. Let's put it this way: we're not prominently in every city yet. So there may be handfuls of us, pockets of us all over, but not big enough for everybody to see it. That's why to this day, you'll still have people come up to you and go, yo, I've never seen that before. And you're thinking, huh? <laughs> we all over, but yeah, not everybody's exposed. But now we're now we're on now we're in, now we're on Tubi. So we can get we exposed. We exposed. <laughs> we, we in that thing. Yo. Because like and, and I was telling you this story the other day, like when I first was starting to even look at PVs, you were one of the first channels that that I saw. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, he looks like me. I was like, if he could do it, then you know, we could do it. And what's funny is my first uh EUC was a V eight as well. Mm -hmm. And um you know, is and you know, quickly gave it to my son because it was I was way too big for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> took me a, but, it took me a week and a half to be like I gotta buy yeah, another yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. I was like, here, here, Jameson, you got to see It's all yours now. Um, but I remember those days, man. I even created a YouTube video, um, like a training video, and um, like my first day video. Those are some of my highest watched. Like my mm -hmm. my my EUC training video, I think has like fifty five thousand views or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was me kind of teach you how to ride one because a lot of at that time, a lot of the tutorial videos were done by like these super experienced riders. Right. So I felt like I knew how to break it down for somebody who doesn't know anything. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And uh, but man, it was it was like like I said, it's it's been a those YouTube days is what built me up to get to the point where, we, where I could kind of do this film. And like this film was actually, we finished it like a year and three months ago. <laughs> and then we, we did the film festival circuit, you know, yeah. for about a year. And, um, you know, and it got into different film festivals, won a couple of awards. And then when it got accepted by the distributor, it took it months to just to show in a catalog. Like I found out that it was going to be on Tubi and it's going to be on some other platforms soon too, but I don't want to talk about those just yet, but, I found out that it was going to be on Tubi like three months ago, but <laughs> it took it that long to show in their catalog. Right. Right. Well, I, I could tell you that all I did was search. I went on and searched electric pioneers on my TV and it searched and it found it right away on Tubi. And it, I just clicked it and I was like, Oh yeah, that's what I want. I want it to be easily searchable easily like easy to be found so everybody can see what we're doing and uh it, it is just that and i love it um uh, let me see oh uh, lady lady rider what's up she's in the house <laughs> so um i so you you're a motivational speaker you're an author and you're a filmmaker and you're also a pev writer so out of all those things what do you identify with the most? If you had to pick one thing, what are you the most? <laughs> it, it's funny because like, I, I would say storyteller. Ah, okay. More than, more than anything, because like, um, with the speaking and stuff, like that's what you are. Like you're a storyteller. And I, and I think that that naturally showed itself in like kind of like the film a little bit and the and ability to like, because that's one of the things that people keep telling me. It was like the story. They was like, it doesn't feel like a bona fide YouTube video. They said it feels like an actual film, an actual documentary. So I would say I identify as a storyteller. Mm -hmm. And that <clears throat> that to me is very key because... It's so funny because I, I just started, well, not just started. Uh, those of you who don't know, I have another YouTube channel, um, the Black Cobra Gaming. And it's funny because I for a year, I didn't do nothing on it. Like every once in a while, I would just, you know, live stream a gaming session. Mm -hmm. And then recently I was like, you know what? I Because I want to be able to live stream to that platform, I mean, that channel as well. And for whatever reason, it won't let me. But I was thinking, how do I... Why do I make videos? I'm looking, I'm researching how to get the the more, you know, more views, more followers on that channel. And I'm like, why do I, I'm like, you know what? It's what I enjoy doing is sharing my story, sharing my exploits, sharing my adventures. So when you say storyteller, 
it's not just like for me, it's not just that I want to tell the story. I want to share the experience. So sharing the experience to me is what brings me joy. Whether I'm sharing the experiences of electric unicycles and PEVs or on my other channel where I'm sharing my experiences in VR, virtual reality and gaming. I just love to share. Like, I don't know about you, but when you're creating a film and, and you're done or you're, you made it even the YouTube videos, when you're done, what gets it for me is knowing that people are going to be able to share what I'm showing them. I just, that's what I want, what I love to do. Like, honestly, I'm passionate about sharing with others. Mm -hmm. Like, going on a ride is fun, but it's way more fun to share it with others. <laughs> like, I agree. No, you, I mean, you hit the nail on the head, man. Like, everybody wants to connect on some level. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that we have technology, it allows us to communicate with people that we typically wouldn't. And, you know, and to be able to, like, share our experiences and stories and stuff like that. Like, I learned, so, like, I think I watch YouTube more than I do TV. <laughs> I, I know I'm, I do. Yeah. Like, no, that's I do. all I do is watch YouTube. I watch mm -hmm. stuff regarding videography, filmmaking. Like, mm -hmm. that's all I really watch. That's probably 80% of, like, what I watch. And then, of course, I have my vices, like, you know, my Game of Thrones or my House of the Dragon or, mm. or something <laughs> like that. You know what I'm saying? But, like, really, like. And and it's and it's everyday people sharing their knowledge, their wealth of experiences, and everything like that. And it's, you know, it's organic. Mm -hmm. And and it it truly is um, something that we can come together over. And I think that's, <clears throat> I don't know. And it's funny because all of my communities, whether it's my law enforcement community, my military community, my PEV community, or my gaming community, no matter what, it's me sharing what I'm doing with those different communities is, is the joy that I, that's, that's what brings me joy. Um, I enjoy it. One of the things that excites me about being able to retire from these jobs is because I'll be able to travel more and share more. And that's all it really is. I just want to share my, my experiences with others. I, I think I get more joy out of seeing people's faces when they're experiencing what I experienced I think that makes me happier than anything. You know, mm. I, I just love being able to bring that to people, you know? I, and I, I mean, the shock value is not it. It's not that I'm like, look, I'm, I want to shock you at the fact that I just did this. No, I want you to see how amazing this is and see that you can do it too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, you hit it. You hit the nail on the head, man. A hundred percent. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm glad you watched me on YouTube. I'm glad you got inspired. I'm glad you watched all of us because there's a lot of people in the chat probably that you've seen, and I'm glad that it, it inspired you to do something that can help us all, because it's it, it's well worth it, man. Well worth it. Um, you definitely that. definitely gotta give your wife a big hug and 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 tell her thank you from me for supporting you. <laughs> yeah, I was at one of the film festivals and. And I was, I was, you know, they let you talk or whatever. And I said, I want to thank you for letting me, because when you're editing, you play the same thing 50 times. Mm -hmm. And she just keeps, she like, if I hear that, that, that <laughs> sequence one more time, she'd be like, put some air on. <laughs> cause you just keep playing that sequence back. Cause you're trying to chop it right. Yes. You know what I'm saying? When you edit yep. it. So, um, so yeah, she, she definitely was a trooper and, um, you know, they, they, they helped a lot, uh, on the film. Um, you know, a lot of, it, it, it was a, like I said, it was a team effort, man. It was a mm -hmm. team effort from everybody, the crew to the family to just everybody, man. They, you know, they came together and they 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 showed out. And, and that's a good thing, man. Um, having having the ability to do these kind of things is not something that everybody has, and it definitely takes a team to be able to do it. It definitely takes family backing you uh, and allowing you to allowing you to create a freedom to do what you need to do. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in my little office down here and I'm telling you, I get it all the time. You going down again? Yeah. <laughs> Cause, uh, Cause she's like, what, what are you doing in there all day? Because honestly, between watching YouTube videos, watching films, watching things that I want to do, and then looking at all the things that I have, I have so much video of stuff that I've never put out because I just haven't had a time to look at it and put it out. On that note, um, Wheel Life Rally, 
2024 is coming August 4th, people. For those that you didn't who didn't already know, uh, August 4th, I still have all the videos and footage from that from last year that I haven't put out yet that I'm going <laughs> to be editing at some point and putting out because this year is fast approaching and I want to use everything we did from last year. So I, I know that this is important and 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 it's it's something that takes a lot of time, but we do it because we love it. Like, would you listen to that thing 50 times over if you didn't love what you was doing? I, I couldn't. I was out <laughs> my charger. No, I, I couldn't do it because, but it, it was part of the process. Let me plug my laptop up real quick. Go ahead, go ahead. So you guys understand how important it is. You guys, you know, you've been back here. You've you've come back and seen the show several times. You've seen all the different people I interview. But it's it's always the same. You know, it's always tons of people trying to come together and share this amazing thing that we do. So uh, I, I, I spend all my time doing it. Um, and I love doing that. Like I would spend all day, every day editing videos. Well, not all day, every day, because I got it. I would prefer to be out riding and making the videos, but then being able to put them together, but I just don't have time to share it all. Um, so I've, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better. I'm coming up with new processes that allow me to share faster. And that's what I need to do. So I'm going to work on that. Um, and that's, and that's one of the hardest parts, man, of like being a creator. It's, it's just like what you said. It's like trying to have a balance of quality and then quantity. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, it's tough because you want your stuff to look good, but then it, it could take a long time. Um, you know, it, it's, it's like that that delicate balance. Yeah, it is. It's important for people to understand that these things don't just happen on their own. I mean, I know you know that, but it like a, a one minute clip of something really good that's edited well can take hours. Hours. So, hours. I mean, sometimes days to get it right, yeah. to feel right. Excuse me. But most of the time you don't have time for that. So you got to cut, clip, edit. And run and i'm like oh man so i could do it all day though i love 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 because i think about i think about how the person who's gonna watch it is gonna feel i think mm -hmm. about how i would feel if i see something dope i'm like oh oh man so you i try to, to be, get you want it to be good yeah you want to give that passion to them right and and, and that's what we're doing sharing our passion um yep. let me see oh i guess we got a new team the E Wheels team. Uh oh, the E Wheels race team. Okay, okay. <laughs> They're hoping oh, e to make it to the Wheel Life team. Rally. I hope so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, speaking of that, there's events every year. You think you're gonna make any of them this year? Like, cause I I know you got a lot that you're doing. Um, yeah, I went to um I went to the One Wheel event that was in like North Carolina. Okay. Um, I went to that uh, last year. Um, so I, I want to go to some events. I don't know yet. Like, I, there's a couple coming up, but I'm trying to. I'm working on like three more documentaries. They're not PV related. They're for like around other things. So I'm working on a couple of projects because, like, like I was telling you earlier, um, Alexia Pioneers was finished about a, a year and three months ago, and then we did a, like a year of like film festivals, and then like you know now we're here. So, like, I'm working on more stuff, but then, you know, you get better as time goes on. So, like, I, I've, the cinematography, video, all of that stuff has improved, like, dramatically. So, I'm doing more stuff, like, for clients and things like that. So, that's been, like, a truly, just like what we was talking about, like, creating, like, it's been a, a fun experience because <laughs> taking on, like, those different challenges, but then still bringing the art of, like, storytelling. But so, it's been, like, super fun. Yeah. <clears throat> it's definitely fun. So let me ask you another question. You 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 said you wrote um you wrote a bunch of books. What were your other books on? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Um that's man, you you do the research. <laughs> so, I love it. I love it. So like my my first book that I wrote was a book called Decisions, A Young Man's Guide to Avoiding the Trap. All of these books are available on Amazon, by the way. And that was a book that I wrote for young men. Um because I saw so many young men making poor decisions and going down the wrong path. So that mm -hmm. was the very first book that I wrote. Um, I wrote another book called The Intentional Student, um, 17 Strategies to Survive and Thrive in College from Day One. And that was a book that I wrote for first-generation college students because um, I taught college for like five years. I mean, I didn't done a bunch of stuff. 
When people, mm-hmm. I, when I be telling people, they be like, "How old are you, bro?" And I'll be like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, "You know, that was one. I wrote a book called Change One on One. What else did I write?" Um, <laughs> It's slipping me. If you hadn't asked me, I could have, I could have <laughs> told well, you. Let Go me ahead. ask you this: the books that you have, right? Are they mm-hmm. all under uh, Patrick? Um, yeah. Or what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you go to Amazon and type in Patrick Phillips, my name comes up, and you should see them all. Or like, if you just find one of them, you could just click on my name under, mm-hmm. and it should pull them um, all up. Um, but yeah, like then we have some more children's books that we wrote. I wrote one of my favorite books that I wrote was a children's book called. Um, um, Pat and a little pet that no one wanted. And it was a story, a true story about um, this gift that my mom bought me when I was like nine years old. Cause we, we grew up in like South Central LA. We didn't have a lot of money. And um, I'll tell the story here because if people buy it, they buy it for their kids. My mom bought me a duck for my birthday. So you got this kid in South Central LA in the hood <laughs> with gangs with a duck, bro. But that duck was my favorite. But that, look, look. <laughs> Yo, I'm I'm hooked already, bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm hooked already, bro. <laughs> Man, Patrick so, and the duck, <laughs> bro. It's a true story. But but you gonna laugh harder when I tell you this. The duck acted like a dog, man. He used to come to practice with me. He would get in the car. I, his name was Oscar. I'm like, Oscar, get in the car. He'll get in the car. He'll sit on the seat and he'd go to practice with us and stuff. I would take him to track practice. He would just chill in track practice. And then, then he'd get back in the car. We'd go home. He was like a dog, man. That was my favorite pet I ever had, man. Oh, Oscar, God. Oscar, man. Oscar the duck. That's my favorite pet, man. That's like my favorite story, man. Like, what a, like a true story. Uh, man. It's a true story. <laughs> Yo, yo, you are killing me right now. Yo, yo, a duck. Yo, uh, look, everybody, look, Patrick, you, if you haven't, if you, <laughs> Patrick Phillips, yo, you have got to go by the duck story. <laughs> it's a look, must read. <laughs> look, y'all didn't think y'all was going to get the duck on a PV costume, did y'all? Did y'all? Look. Yo. What I want to know is, have you illustrated that with a duck on a wheel yet? Because now, now it's in my head. I need to see look, a duck look, on a that, wheel. That would be, look, why you lying? That would be lit. You know what yo, I'm saying? That would be yo, lit. somebody, yo, we got creatives in the chat. Yo, hit, hit us up. We need to see Oscar the Duck on an EUC. Yo. Right. Hey, that would be lit, man. That would be lit. Oscar oh, be killing man. Them. Yo, yeah, so who did the story. illustrations for your book here, The Little Jam and The Electric Unicycle? Yeah, it's Cam- a, um, a oh, friend Cam of mine. Oh, Cam Wilson? It's, yeah, yeah. He's okay. a great illustrator. So he uh, illustrates all of our books, uh, does a good okay. job. You know, when we tell him what we're looking for with the visuals and he just runs with it, man. Well, but you know yeah, why man. I'm asking, right? Why is that? Cam needs to do a duck. <laughs> Look, I'm hitting him up tonight. I'm hitting Yo. him up tonight. <laughs> Look, Yo, the new tell book. me, tell him I need a, I need an image, the first copy of the image. I need. <laughs> yeah, I got you. You gonna be the first one to get your copy, man. You gonna be the first. One. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Oh, I, I'm having a little too much fun. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Geico EUC commercials with the duck with the EUC duck. <laughs> Yo, the chat is stupid. <laughs> look, look, it's the truth. And Oscar was, he was a white, uh, like he had a white duck. Cause Oscar was, he was a black duck. And then we ended up getting more ducks. So I had, by the time it was all said it. <laughs> Yo, it's South Central LA. You <laughs> ducks. Yo. Y'all had a duck farm. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, man. We was lit. We was uh, lit, man. Oh. <laughs> we was lit, man. Oh, Yo, my God, man. Yeah. Anybody that was on the team, on the race team with Patrick, y'all knew he was going to be something when y'all saw him show up with that duck. <laughs> <laughs> 
They said, now that's a special dude, right? Dude, right? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, you got to be different. You got to stand up, man. You got to stand up. <laughs> Yo, I love it, man. I love it. No, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for sharing that because you made my night. <laughs> it's the truth, it, was, man. it was already it's the truth, a good. Too. You already had me. Oh. Now you really got me. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Uh, oh, Roger. Roger, you really, Roger? Roger said, duck is delicious. <laughs> yeah, why you got not as an image of you eating Oscar? Come nah, on, we, Roger. We, we, you can't eat Oscar, man. You can't eat Oscar, bro. <laughs> you can't eat my duck, man. Oh, man. Oh, no. But thank you, man. I really appreciate you for coming out and talking to me. Um, I think that, as usual, like, I don't think there's anybody I've ever interviewed on here that hasn't become part of the, the the family. So I appreciate you. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Uh, sure. <clears throat> hopefully you make it out to one of the events this year. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping to make it down um, down that way because ATL is one of those places where I would love to ride. Uh, but there's a lot of beautiful places I want to ride. Texas, South Carolina, just so many places. But then there's so many places in Europe that I've been and I wish I had a wheel when I was there. I was in um, Switzerland, and I really wish I had a wheel when I was there. In Hawaii, shouts out to Black Hercules out in Hawaii. What's up, brother? He puts a lot of posts up out there doing his thing. He makes yeah. me jealous because I'm like, yo, I enjoyed Hawaii. I wish I had a wheel when I was there. Um, yeah. So it's just <clears throat> a lot of spots that we're going to go this year. I think we are going to make it out. Um, hopefully, we're going to make it out to Vegas again. We're not sure if that's going to happen, but we believe so. Um, we don't know. We'll see. Um, so if we make it out to Vegas, if we make it out to South Carolina, um, I don't know, you know, obviously here, uh, in, in uh, Western mass up in new England here and Southwick is where the wheel life rally is. So if you got an opportunity, August 4th, make your plans now, um, you know, book your Airbnb now it's on the fourth, but you can come in on the third, um, and set up if you got a camper or something that you want to set up you can set it up on the third we'll be setting up everything on the third and bright and early on the fourth we'll be kicking it off this year we're going to try and squeeze it into one day because last year we kind of dragged it out into two and then this year we're going to squeeze it into to one and if that seems to be too much then maybe next year we'll go back to two but um <clears throat> a lot of things we got some euc jousting i can't wait to see last year that was fun yeah, dangerous. Yeah, no, dangerous. it's a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. <laughs> Yo, the jousting sticks. Matter of fact, you can see the, the black stick sticking up over one of my wheels back there. And it, it's got a foam thing on the end. And you just you just bashing people with the foam. Oh, but we had a lot that's, of fun. That's a, you ain't got no video of that? I would like to yes. see that. that yes, crazy. there's video I've of that. I've seen people man. doing like the golf. Or not golf, but is it lacrosse? Polo. Whatever. Polo. Polo. I've seen that. I ain't seen mm -hmm. jousting, man. That, that well, because the only place that there was jousting was at the Wheel Life Rally. We're the only ones that had it. So, you know, and um, yeah, I'll put more video up. Matter of fact, I'll send you something as soon as we're done here. Um, but there's a lot more to it that we got to put up. But yeah, so... Is there anything you got up and coming that you want to share? Anything you about to do or you want us to um to know about? <clears throat> um, no, uh, not necessarily, man. Just if, if people like the film just came out on Tubi like like four or five days ago. So okay, if you know somebody, if you could just please just share it with people. Um, share it on your social media. Help 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 me out. You know, post it in any groups that you know. You know, post a link in there, or whatever, on my on my social media account, like which is uh, Instagram is Lansing Phillips. You know, you could grab the video that I posted about it, the trailer. Or, did you got you got the trailer? Yes. Matter of <clears> fact, <throat> let's hit that. I'm glad you just said that. Let's do the trailer right now. Hang on a second. Um, so <clears throat> so you guys heard that? Make sure you hit this up because we want to make this. You know, especially that 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 individual that was talking about. The lawmakers in the state, New Jer uh, not Jersey, but um, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Whatever. Yeah, man, share that because um, share that with them because that's that's really what I want, you know, um, people to really see us. Yeah, that's that's definitely what we want. Uh, okay, let me um, <clears throat> let me get us here, hit this share button, and we're gonna we're gonna share the trailer real quick. So check out the trailer for Electric. I feel like whatever I enjoy that makes me happy, and makes me. Not want to drink, not want to do drugs. Um, I should be doing it. You see a lot of me that have back this 
sense of freedom that I hadn't had previously. People think it's kind of odd to see a family, and I'll even venture to say a black family doing something like skateboarding together. So if I could talk to a lawmaker about PVs, I'd want them to see the community and how much. There it is. <clears throat> I hope you guys have checked this out. Um, if you haven't yet, when we leave here, go to Tubi and search that up. Electric Pioneers. Um, as a matter of fact, this guy. Still or fun. or it, even a book too, like because we were talking about them. Like if you you have children or you want to share, you know it. It helps, you know, it helps us out, um, you know, because Electric Pioneers was a passion project. I didn't get much funding for that. So I, I came out of pocket uh, for a lot of things, like when we would have the, the set days, you know, feeding people, um, you know, all the film festivals. I pay for all of that myself. Um, so it, it costs money and, um, you know, it, it was well worth it. But, you know, support another <laughs> independent artist if you could, you know, buy a book tell a friend about about the film just you know anything you could do to just kind of help support would be greatly appreciated definitely definitely and that's one thing we do is try to support each other um it is it's it's like fantastic to see people doing well um but <clears throat> even if people aren't doing well we want to help so that they can be doing well and i think in this instance um you put out a lot of stuff that people can consume you know, you have books out there, you have, you know, videos out there, and now you have a movie out there. This is this is a documentary that can be expanded upon. It's something that I know everybody in this chat right now and everybody watching this, everybody feels like we there's no way that you can be a writer and not feel excuse me, every word that's in there. Like I watched it. I almost watched it a second time back to back just because I felt like, man, I want to, I want to see more of that because what we do, um, and, and what we go through, not everybody feels, <clears throat> but this is how we get them to feel it is to show it to them. So I think this is a great idea. Um, and with legislation trying to change, it's like a perfect time, perfect time. So even though you did it a while ago, it's like it's it's and, and I know to you it felt like damn this is taking forever, but <laughs> it was worth but, it. It was worth yeah, it, though, man. But it's not just it was worth it, but it's it's at the right time. You know what I mean? I always say it. God has a plan. You know what I mean? We plan. God laughs. I know you heard that. Mm. It's one yeah. of those things that we feel things should be right now, and you know, and I get caught up in that too. I'm like, oh, I want to do this right now. I want to get this done. I want to get you know. But things happen when they're supposed to happen. And things that don't happen maybe weren't supposed to happen. So I try not to worry so much about so much. You know, my wife asked me, how you always, you just stay calm. I don't even know how you do. I'm like, well, I'm used to chaos, you know. And what I do and throughout my life has been a lot of chaos that I've had to deal with. Organized chaos has to be <clears throat> what I come out with. So I try to stay calm and just deal through it. So when I get all caught up, I'm like, oh man, I can't do this. I can't, it's just too much. It's just too much. I just try and calm down and deal with it. And it's one of those things you wanted the film to be out a year ago, two years ago, whatever. But it came out when it was ready. It came out when it was time. It came out yeah. when this legislation needs to see it. You know, you feel me? It's like timing is everything. And I think this is just another thing that's going to help us in, in, advocating what we love so uh, and I, can i just say this thank you for so much for having me um you know when when i reached out you was like let's do it you know what i'm saying and um i really appreciate it because like people don't know how much time and energy this takes so i respect your time and thank you so so much for allowing uh, me to uh speak with you this evening no I, i'm i'm glad you did reach out and i'm glad that because to me like we don't know each other. So the odds of us running across each other may have, may have never happened, but it happened in a way that it was meant to happen. And it, it put us in each other's path so much so that we were able to come together and talk about this. And I, I, I also feel that even our conversation tonight has helped people. 
And if it hasn't, it will, because I know that there are people who are feeling how we feel and don't know how to voice it. Mm-hmm. Like my man in the chat there, he shared his story out of, out of the blue. We didn't know he was there. We didn't know his story, but his, he resonated with what we were saying. So I'm glad that we were able to come together and even give Steven an opportunity to pop out and say something because it was meant to be. That's how I feel. I truly do. So I'm sure we'll see each other soon, man. I I, I don't know yeah. where. That's why I was trying to find a spot. But, you know, whether it's in South Carolina, if I make it down there, or um, the Amped Electric Games, man, that's coming up too in Bentonville. I know that's a little far for a lot of people to travel. A lot of people feel like, you know, they're you know, they, they not sure if they can make it. But it's worth it. Let me tell you, anything we do, anywhere you see Amped Electric Games or Will Life Rally <laughs> or the Black Cobra, if you see us out there, it's a worthwhile event and it's somewhere that you probably want to be. <laughs> because we try to go to the things that we know are going to bring value to people's lives. So to everybody out in the in the chat, I appreciate you guys coming through. Once again, you guys always show up for me and 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 whoever I have on the show, so I appreciate that. Um and for you Patrick, keep doing what you're doing, man. Don't slow down. Um you know, you and I had a conversation and it's funny because Everything I think of, I'm like, all right, if I haven't done it, you done it. Like, <laughs> like we were talking about teaching last night because I was so close. Um, uh, I have a degree in sociology and criminal justice, and I was thinking about teaching so many years. I was going to do it. I was going to do it. And I was like, eh, I don't think it's what I need, what need to be doing. And uh, he, me and him were talking about it. <laughs> we're like, yo, I'm like, you know, and it wasn't my road to travel, you know, but he was telling me, you know, he, he taught for many years. And I'm like, there we go. It's, it's good that we could come together and share that kind of stuff, you know, that kind of energy. So keep keep being positive, Patrick. Keep doing what you're doing, man. And if you need anything, you know, you can always reach out. You see all these people in the chat. This is, this is our community. Our community is here, and there's going to be tons more people to watch this back and who will probably reach out to you. Um, so, you know, we appreciate your efforts. We thank you and again. I and I appreciate the community because they people have been sharing it and talking about it. That message, it keeps me going. It really does. So thank you guys, too. All right. So uh, uh, your your wife is there. Is she, is she in the other room? She She's in the other room. <laughs> she, she, I was, was going to say, does she want to come and say hi? <laughs> look, she, she do not like being on camera. She I know she don't. <laughs> she would get mad at me if I call her here. She'd be like, you know what? I can't get her mad on Valentine's Day, man. You no, trying to get me no. sleeping on the couch, man. You gonna tell me, man, you sleep on the couch on Valentine's Day, man. You trying to get me on the couch, man. Stop, man. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I seen the film. I know she don't like me at all. <laughs> but she did a good job, though, man. She killed it. She did. For someone she who don't like being on camera, she she really she pushed it out. So yeah. shouts out to her, too, because that, that means a lot. Especially coming from someone like me who can't can't get that to happen over here. I can't, I can't get that. Yo. <laughs> you know, the closest I got. Oh, wait, wait, I can't say that. The closest I got for Christmas, I bought wifey an electric bike, y'all. So she, she got an elect, she got electric bike. Not yet, because we ain't had no good weather yet. But that's true. Yeah. And she should get out a, there on that thing. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Oh, actually, there was an issue though. There was a faulty something that i have to replace so that's the other reason why she ain't ride it yet yeah it just has it's one of those things you know you you make a hundred of them maybe five of them have a problem and of course I'm like yeah. leave it to me so to, have, <laughs> to get the problem to, to, to get the problem yep yeah. so they sent me the part i just gotta swap it out and then we'll get her out there so but electric bike i'm hoping i'm hoping it's gonna gear her towards the electric and whatever so i hope so um, too yeah man thank you i appreciate that all right, man. Is it, if there's nothing else you want to say, you got you got one positive message to, to to share with everybody. What what is what has EUC meant to you, or what has PEVs meant to you? Because you got more than just EUC. EUC. Yeah. Um. Man, I I, I would say um, network. You know what I'm saying, and uh, and community, because you know it. You meet so many different type of people in all lines of work who do all kind of things. And we just all come together around this one, this one thing that we do. So I would just say the community, the network, the the friendship, the camaraderie, all of those things combined, man, it's it's just, you know, it's it's amazing. There you go. Well, I I I, I will I would like to go for a ride right now. I really would. <laughs> 
I really would. After doing this, I always want to go for a ride. You can see the wheel. Well, go watch Electric Pioneers again then. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I got two wheels in a corner. I got a wheel in one room, a wheel in another room. <laughs> Dang, man. I'm going to go ride around the house. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to take out the little one, right? I'm going to ride it yeah. around the house. Go right around the house, man. Get it in. Get your feels out, man. All right. Y'all have a good night. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. It's your man, Black Cobra, the Wheel Life Show. Patrick, my man, we'll see you next time. Come back and check us out in the next one. Deuces. We out.